All right, boom, baby, we are live. Welcome to Interview with the Man, episode 378. I am joined here by uh, Mr. Aaron Clary, who is the uh, commander-in-chief at assholeconsulting.com. Yes, uh, yes. Aaron Clary is just the, the most optimistic man in the manosphere. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're here to we're, – listen, guys – Today, today, listen. We're just gonna give give it very straight. We finished up the series of how a loser lives his life. Now we're gonna talk about the economic doom that America is heading towards. And uh, it's a you gotta put on your big boy episode pants because uh, we're gonna get pretty deep and dark. But I, it's just imperative that you guys know what, what what is. I mean, this is inevitable, right, Cappy? At this point, yeah, it's 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 gonna happen. Um, it's. Uh... It, it, there's other factors that determine when it's going to happen, when there might be a crisis, when there's going to be a crash. And that's always the debate of economics. You can, it's very much like building up a ton of fuel. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, you could build up all the fuel in the world and say, this is overvalued or we're about to crash or that's about to blow up. But not until you have a spark, do you get an explosion? So um, you can, you, you can see, for example, the housing bubble that lasted easily two more years than it had to. It just took a, right. a huge major default. Uh, the mortgage uh, market for that to trigger it. So yeah, it's it's not it, it's a question of when, not if, uh, and nobody knows when. Even economists like me. Yeah, um, you know, I'm me and Charlie. Uh, we're under the impression that this whole uh, situation with the 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 beer bug situation, we believe it's it's a cover up for uh, the banks and and all the people to kind of catch up on their endless money printing. I know it sounds a little tinfoil hat, but I mean, look at what was happening with Deutsche Bank in uh, February. You know, uh, their shares were tanking, and um, there's people don't seem to realize that <laughs> the longer we go on with this fiat money system that is now internationally intertwined, uh, the 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 more in incredibly insane the fall the fallout's going to be. Am I am I missing out here? But I'm pretty sure I'm correct. Yeah, the, and define fallout. Like you could still have a growing economy mm -hmm. uh, in an inflationary environment, I uh, because the the key thing with inflation is that it changes prices so quickly it then starts to interrupt with the functioning of the normal government. Um, but you can have inflation, like for example, in the seventies. Uh, I don't even know if you were around then, but we had mm -hmm. stagflation in the United States. There was still economic growth. We just had a significant amount of inflation. Uh, <clears throat> what you're really worried about is, again, let's use the uh, housing bubble as an example. We could use the education bubbles where you print off money or you lend money at very low interest rates to a particular sector of the economy. And then all of a sudden, the underlying value of that asset or that economy cannot keep up with prices. Anyone who's invested in that particular economy, be it uh, people buying college degrees, right? Or people buying McMansions in the suburbs, then taking the home equity out to buy themselves a Corvette. Uh, when the money is cut off, whether it's low interest rates, lending at low rates, or just money printer go burr, mm -hmm. uh, then prices collapse. And then all the assets, all the investment that were based on this continual perpetuation of increased prices or the currently high prices usually use it as collateral. That dries up, banks cut off lending, and then then you have a genuine economic recession. Right. Um <clears throat> We have this uh, again, like this one point nine trillion dollar uh, bill that was just passed, which I think is like the largest uh, economic bailout package we've ever, ever had yeah. in American yeah. history. Yeah. Um, what you know? Have you actually looked into the details of the bill, the bill itself? No, uh, simply because I don't. I can't. I'm I'm so done with watching the news. <laughs> And I've this is what our 10th, 12th bailout. We, we did the SNL bailout, which if you guys probably don't remember, that was in 1989. There was long term credit management bailout. We didn't care about that. We bailed out the banks. We're going to bail out college students. And it just now we're going to we're going to essentially bail out the American public. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's not just the United States. Every major economy in the world right now, their central banks are doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's simply this, it's, it's, are you going to force your population to work up and pay for what it wants or are politicians simply going to print off money to bail people out of their mistakes, out of their sins, out of their errors, out of their dumbass decisions, mm -hmm. uh, or just to buy votes. And so one, one will actually increase economic growth by forcing people into reality. 
The other, <clears throat> again, depending on how much you print off, uh, down the road, if it keeps going, yes, that will also deter economic growth, but it will fundamentally warp any financial incentives people have to work, invest, uh, pricing, which is a boring concept. You need to know the value of something in order right. to, like for a business, to, like what's the cost of that factory going to be? Well, if inflation is 15%, we don't know. Um, and so that's that's the what they're doing. But I've stopped caring because... Uh, to give you a little bit of a history, I was one of the people way ahead of the curve on the education bubble, warning people about worthless degrees mm -hmm. and the uh, housing crash. And not only did no one listen, I got reprimanded, yell at, you know, I'm, I'm called ists and isms because I tell girls not to major in dumb crap. And mm -hmm. so after a while, you just give up your hand and because my life is too short. And I already know the end of this story and I don't care and I'm not going to stop it. So it's 1.9 trillion. I'm sure it's going to everybody except those who probably need it. I'm sure y'all <laughs> sure got your Biden bucks or your Trump bucks. I'm, I'm happy y'all bought Xbox 360s. Now everyone's life is going to be perfect because y'all got your Trump bucks that one time. Uh, but it, it's, uh, I, I just don't care. I, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I even wrote a book called Enjoy the Decline eight years yeah. ago where, where it's just like who cares you know give up I'm, I'm not going to waste my happiness my mental health or my my simple time on this type of stuff i mean if someone paid me an egregious amount of money i'd look it up but i'm i'm not getting paid egregious money to look up budget issues we have one of your uh one of your delightful fans analysis says i'm here for aaron the other dude's a bitch so uh <laughs> thanks, marco. thanks marco um yeah the i i think one of the the bigger things that um, is kind of swept under the carpet in the red pill area is uh, a fear to confront your financial problems because because everybody thinks uh, the solution to your financial problem is get rich and then it's such like a a, a mindset of of like it's an intimidating thing to to try and do and most people would rather you know comfort comfortably kind of like eke their way through life than right you know you know, kind of go for that. But I mean, you're a big fan of minimalism. I know I, it doesn't look like it, but I'm actually a huge minimalist myself. Um, I really hate having tons of stuff around the house. It drives me nuts. I seriously wear the same pair of pants probably four days out of the week, just gray sweatpants sure. and the same shoes. Cause I, I just can't be bothered to, to use my mental willpower to pick up outfits and stuff. I'd rather just focus on building my business. Obviously, you know, I'm huge into crypto and, and all that jazz. So I'd rather just use my energy will points to to maximize my my uh, money earning skills right now, then you know, wonder like, should I coordinate jeans and, and shoes? And I know it sounds like petty, but trust me, it it adds up. It does. No, no, and <clears throat> there's there's another. Thing. We could talk about well, how most people they would like to become rich, but they're looking for the easy way out. Okay, you gotta understand this, big deadly serious. Most people are inferior. Yes. And the reason most people are inferior is because they're lazy. Uh. And that's a human genetic trait because yep. that's how we survived in the olden days. Yep. And your goal was to just get by in the olden days because you didn't know when your next antelope for food was coming along. You didn't know if the crop was going to come in. Right. So there's, there's this huge uh, biological program. Every human, every human has in them because I want to be lazy. I just choose to work really hard so I don't have to have over the long term. I spend less money. I work hard now. So I spend less time, energy and effort. <clears throat> But now that we live in, mostly I think everyone tuning in is in a democracy. Uh, right. That unfortunately is the Achilles heel uh, to democracy is human laziness, where it's like, well, I could just vote in other people's stuff. And if you yeah. look, I don't know, I'm sure it's not the same in Japan, but certainly uh, Western cultures, uh, first world Western cultures, mm -hmm. it's those brat bastards over there have more than you because yeah. of choose from a long menu list of reason they're jewish they're black they're hispanic so we go with race mm -hmm. they're male they're female they're non, uh, uh, non-binary we're going to go with gender real or made up mental illnesses real or ma made up their right. religion we're all going to go with traits uh and it's it's team x versus team y and those guys are benefiting unfairly and that's why i'm entitled to to universal basic income or to be bailed out of my student loans, or to have, I mean, we could go way back to the FDR days, why I'm entitled to social security. Uh, and all, all it is is people, they don't wanna work, 
but they don't want to achieve excellence either. And what's really interesting, especially now with the internet, you can see this. In the olden days, if you were on welfare or whatever, you collected your check, you, you, uh, whatever, you bought some food, maybe you grabbed yourself a, a bottle of booze or wine or something. You went home and you watched your daytime soaps. Now on the internet, uh, you have this vanity where these, again, mostly inferior people celebrate the brand of me. Yeah. And like, I got this, it's social media, and oh my goodness, look at me. You're like, dude, bro, look at us partying it up. You know, we got bottled service in Vegas. They're all bankrupt. They're all begging for a bailout. None of them saving for a 401k or retirement plan. Yeah. And so that, that's what, you know, that's why I can't watch it anymore. You know, I can't, I can't, I don't like doing social media. I don't like watching the news. I don't care what Fippy Fizz and his three fizzettes said in Hollywood <laughs> today. <laughs> I don't give a damn. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, that's and that's that kind of gives you the psychological uh, layout of the, the battlefield or what you're facing. The vast majority of people don't want to work. The yeah. vast majority of people are willing to lie to themselves because they know as long as it gets some free money, it's other people's fault and I'm entitled to free crap. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. then for those of you who happen to be independent, you want to achieve excellence or and it doesn't even have to be in a financial capacity. You just want to, you don't want your life pissed away. You want to go live it, uh, be it in terms of pursuing excellence in uh, physical endeavors, could be entrepreneurial endeavors, intellectual endeavors, or maybe you just want to have a thin wife and a nuclear family and some kids. That's like the most radical thing. I mean, she makes you a sandwich every <laughs> once in a while. That's really rebellious. I mean, it's okay yep. if you want to make a quarter million a year, but if you want a thin wife to be married to you till death do your partner, that's radical. Uh, these people will be jealous, not just on financial levels, but emotional, physique, uh, intellectual, mental. I mean, I, you, you could even see it where people brag about their mental illnesses. It's like, you should not be celebrating something that makes you miserable. But yeah. that's that's it. So that just so you know, it, it doesn't solve these problems, but it explains what a lot of people are facing today, economically, psycho psychologically, sociologically. I, I <clears throat> the 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 endless grasping uh, for a, 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 a trophy of mediocrity always cracks me up. Uh, yes. I, Adriano Ramos with the A two dollars says, "Cappy, should MLT get a vasectomy too?" I think I know the answer to that one. Well, I no, it, it. I mean, yeah, if you want the human race to continue un, unimpeded, but no, yep. I think I think I hate I hate to give John a compliment. Um, Don't he's do found it. A, he's found a, a culture where it wouldn't surprise me someday with Mister Boppy or Bape or whatever the heck ha hat he's got on. Uh, All of a sudden, there's this cute little Asian girl that had a little bit more twinkle in her eye than the other cute Asian girls, and then he's got a a brood of 10 children and he all names them John. Uh, yep. and, and you know, I, I can see you cause you're having fun. You found a culture you're getting along with and the girls seem to like yeah. you over there too. So I, I, I would not get a vasectomy if you, if you want to have kids. No. Yeah. No. I mean, I've thought about it turning uh 35 now, but I mean, I just got so much momentum with uh, my personal life and my goals that, you know, I, I got a couple more years I could put it off for. Does uh, let me ask you some does does, does Miss Cappy make you sandwich uh, when you ask for it? Oh, she just uh, yesterday uh, wasn't sandwich. It was mahi mahi tuna mm -hmm. with carbless noodles and uh, roasted beets. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Now that that's not that's not every day. The, the girl has a real job and all that. But yeah, about at least two meals a week are kind of prepared, uh, if not three or four. And What's uh, but the we also sandwich. The go to say I don't uh, it's it's not it's not sandwich it's, uh, it's what is it well it, it mine depends. is a mine is, you know you do know udon is udon noodles oh, yeah the noodles sure of course yeah <laughs> she makes me udon noodles with uh with thin uh boiled like uh beef slice yeah beef slices yeah. exactly yeah. yeah we uh well the other thing is we also like to get out of the house because I work from home. So okay. uh, I'm sure if I had a regular job, we'd be eating at home more. But she's like, do you want dinner? I'm like, yeah, but not here. Let's get the heck out. So yeah, she probably would cook more um, if I didn't want to be cooped up at my house all day. Uh, but my, I guess my go-to, to be perfectly honest, is Poke Bowl. Okay. Because Pokey is awesome, man. Like, Fancy. There's, a, there's a great place <laughs> down there. And I like get a big super chat. I'm like, oh, boy, Pokey Bowl today, guys. <laughs> get me some Pokey Bowl. How much is a Pokey Bowl running you these days up in well, Minnesota? It's, uh, the, the regular Pokey Bowl is 15 bucks, But I usually am willing to spend an extra couple bucks to get, like, you know, maybe some extra jalapenos or masago okay. or maybe the spicy tuna. 
Um, so it depends on that, but they fill you up. So you don't want to, you don't want to get too many extras because uh, I'm yeah, a smaller guy, but it can run 20 bucks, but that's like the super pokey bowl from heaven. So that everybody knows what to get you for your birthday. Now, $20 super chats for pokey balls. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So let, let's talk about this because, um, obviously, you, you know, um, I, I think I'm the only one who has actively has a channel in this weird corner of the internet that we're in <laughs> our industry <laughs> yeah that uh that talks about it i don't think anybody else has a weekly show educating men about cryptocurrency and i stuck to my guns because i knew this was coming mm. when i first started off the analytics on the channel were the worst they were just mm. the worst thing it was the most unwatched stuff and now it's rivaling uh the dating stuff and mm. um i just knew two things i knew the power of the internet was only going to increase and I knew inflation was going to increase. And I saw what Airbnb did to the hotel industry. I saw what Uber did to the taxi industry. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, Bitcoin is coming for the banking industry. Like, you know, that's a big target to come from. Um, and I'm not saying Bitcoin's always going to be the winner, but right now um, I think with uh, all this insane money printing, um, Bitcoin is, it's, it's becoming unignorable at mm -hmm. this point. Right. And, I, a concept I want people to understand about crypto relative to other currencies is uh, when you, when we talk about inflation, don't view about it as price. And certainly, this is to, the key to understanding inflation is to never think of the word value. There is no value. Like people said, my house went up by. 30%. No, your house did not go up in value by 30%. They just printed off 30% more money. It's the same house. I'm sure a new house today has slightly better technology than a house did two years ago. But our housing stock, the value of our property did not increase 30%. The mm -hmm. stock market, again, oh, my stocks are doing great and I have a big dick. No, you live in a country where they printed off more yuan, yen, pounds, dollars, and that money has to go somewhere. So with yep. cryptocurrency, uh, or we could say other precious metals or quasi-currencies like uh, gold or silver, um, it's not so much that you're investing like now crypto has gone up tremendously. So I would say the value has gone up because there's been a fundamental shift. More people are starting to appreciate and realize what crypto is and can do, <clears throat> but realize it's, it's a state, it's a, a store of value. It's, it's rapidly right. increasing a place to store your purchasing power. So you're not, it's not that you are 40,000% richer. Uh, it's that you didn't hold on to dollars, which are rapidly decreasing in value, and you've maintained your purchasing power. A yeah. lot of people say, oh, what, what should I do to invest against it? inflation? It's like, well, you could do silver. I think that's one of my favorite things to do. Uh, investing in a diversified stock index like the S&P 500 has proven to also be a very good hedge against inflation. Mm -hmm. People who own their homes, if you have uh, home ownership, over time, generally, you'll also be hedged against inflation. But you are not doing investing yeah there there is a there is a real rate of return there but most of it most of the gains over uh, oh gosh i'd say even the past hundred years most of the gains come from the fact that we've increased our money supply by that much so mm -hmm. some real interesting to do let's take bitcoin for example it's 21 million dollar or 21 million current units right uh and how old is bitcoin i could probably even look this up real quick how long has bitcoin been around uh it came out like 2009 so 12 years, give or take. All right. So the, if you'll and bear there's with not, me. Tw there's 21 million is the is the amount that will be ever released. But currently, I think only 18 to 19 million are in circulation. <clears throat> right. So here I'm just going to pull up the monetary base, which is the number of uh, dollars in circulation, like actual okay. printed off dollars. So in 2009, there was one point five trillion dollars in circulation. Do you know what that is today? Well, there was one point, I'm sorry, $1.9 trillion, you said? $1.9 trillion. Oh, that when, when crypto came, when, when Bitcoin came out in 2009, one, uh, $1.5 trillion US dollars, global supply. That's mm -hmm. how many dollars are in circulation. We can argue M2, M3 money supply for any economist. I'm, talk, I'm just talking the monetary base. What money printer went first? So $1.5 trillion. Now, this is like 11 years later. Do you know how many US dollars are in global circulation? Total supply of global dollars. Uh, 100 trillion. No, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 5.6. 5. 100 trillion, we'd have some serious issues. Okay. Uh, 5.6. <laughs> so we've, 
five point six. Okay, yeah. We've increased the money supply four times. Right. Right. And and it, it so the ratio, if we I'd have to do the numbers and calculate that's it. If you wow. want to know what the real exchange rate is, you take the global supply of one currency and you divide it by the global supply of the other, because that's how many dollars per Bitcoin there is. The wow. currency markets may trade that differently, but right now, if we're to like say, okay, how many dollars are there and how many uh, bitcoins are there? You take 5.6 trillion, you divide it by uh five. Um, no, I'm sorry, you take yeah, 5.6 trillion you divide it by 21 uh, million. Heck, I could right. probably do that right here. Five, six. Oh, I got the seven. exact number. So currently, oh, the exact number of Bitcoin is 18.6 million Bitcoin are currently in um, in circulation. Okay, so let us let me let me pull it up. This would be of incredible benefit for any of your audience. You want me to pull up a calculator and we, I can no, do I'm, it? No, I'm, on... I'm doing it right now. I try, I'm a professional economist. It's just I'm hard. I'm bad with decimals. All right, that's 5,600. That's thousands. One, two, three. That's uh, millions. One, two, three. That's billions. One, two, three. That's trillions divided by 18 million. One, eight, zero, zero, zero. Zero zero zero, so the ratio is three hundred eleven thousand dollars per Bitcoin. Wow, yeah. So just to give you a perspective, now I'm not saying it's going to go up to that, but all these people, oh, cryptocurrency and Bitcoin, da, 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 and I know there's other competing cryptocurrencies out there, mm -hmm. but just so you know, for every crypto, for every Bitcoin out there, there's three hundred eleven thousand us dollars and i wonder if that number is going to keep going up and inevitably what's going to happen if we keep doing this it maybe not all you know someday we'll wake up and oh my gosh it's worth three hundred thousand someday but the more and more dollars you're going to flood with the market let alone any other currency relative to a cryptocurrency that has a limited fixed fine uh, finite amount the ratio that ratio is only going to increase and so hopefully you kind of see how it's it's not yeah. about it's not about value it's yep. about maintaining your purchasing power. What I've been doing too is kind of reverse hedge because I know that there are some people in the government that are intentionally, they need assets to inflate. And I believe crypto is just going to be another asset to, for them to inflate. I mean, why not? It's way easier than a house. A house you have oh, to yeah. build. Crypto, you'd be like, yeah, it's it's over there in it's space. It's over there. <laughs> Got my username and password. Here we are. Yeah, it's worth $100,000. So print it up. <laughs> yeah, right. And and it doesn't have to be crypto and and uh but you could you could buy silver, you could buy stocks. Uh it is a lot easier to have a brokerage account with a username and a password mm -hmm. uh than it is to buy a home. Yep. Or or you know, because a home there's closing costs and you gotta maintain it and there's expenses associated with it. So I'm just trying to open everybody's mind listening, uh, that going forward, you know, everyone's thinking about investing. I'm thinking you really got to look at this more as hedging against inflation and maintaining your purchasing power. And cryptocurrency, I believe, is is one of those venues you should consider. Yep. Yep. How, how, let me ask you something, because you mentioned uh, in some of your financial stuff, and I think it was on your Twitter, but you you only own, you know, you're in the only own one house, but why didn't you go down the route of like, collecting homes and and collecting rental income why did you shy did. away from that well a, a couple reasons but i i did i had two rental properties at one time and mm -hmm. uh what what got me out was minnesota uh my i had a property in minneapolis mm -hmm. uh, i sold that gosh 14 years ago mm -hmm. and thank god i did because those riots were no more than three blocks away from my house my my neighborhood bar got burnt down uh, wow. So the, the property taxes, but it, what really drove me away was the property taxes because I was making money on the property and then all of a sudden they jacked up property, but I think it was like 400% in seven years and now it was no longer a profitable asset. What the fuck? Well, you don't, we can talk about it later, but basically if you're in a large leftist city, you don't own your property. You're really just renting it from the city and the county. Mm -hmm. And they will, I was paying more in taxes than I, than I was generating in rent. You know, for God's sake, um, here come the degenerates from Charlie's channel. They're all piling in to get ready for the crypto and everything to be spotted in the chat. If you guys have questions for Cappy, send it super chat. Send him a twenty dollars Pokeball super chat. I'll I'll PayPal it over to him. Send twenty five dollars to cover the fee for me. But sure, sure. time and labor, right? Uh, uh, but anyway, so but and then I I had another. I moved out to the Burbs. Uh, yeah, and I sold that house because I want to get out of Minnesota. 
Uh, yeah. I don't want to be here anymore. And I'm, I'm building a little house. It's not a glorious house, but it's a nice little house in South Dakota. So that's, I did have rental property at one time mm -hmm. uh, and that's how I could retire so early, but I, I don't want to own property anymore. So let me ask you kind of may, may seem an elementary question to you, but I think it'd be, it's a good question for the audience as well. What's the benefit of these stupid governments in Minneapolis raising the property tax if it's just driving people like you out of the market? It's it, there is no benefit to it. You're it's it's mm -hmm. called it, it triggers what's called capital flight mm -hmm. uh, or right. sometimes also called brain drain. Uh, you, you, there's no reason or logic to it. Don't think there's a reason or logic to it. It is lazy, truly privileged elitist jerks who are on the city council and the county board who want to get reelected. And as I said before, John, their number one thing is they're lazy and they want to avoid work. And being a go an elected government official is one of the lazier jobs you can get. They don't care what they do to their city. They don't care what they do to the population that lives within the city. And by the way, the vast majority, if you think you think Democrats or leftists or socialists, whichever country you know, or labor party is your friend, the majority of people who suffered in these riots were not your white picket fence conservatives. Uh, the people's buildings who got burned down were at least in the Twin Cities immigrants. Yeah. What what the political uh, electorate wants to do is just keep their government jobs. Yeah. And you tell a population of lazy people that it's the rich people's fault. That's generally your most universal scapegoat because actually Minneapolis is quite a diversified city. So you can't say it's that group of people or this group of people because you're going to alienate a significant percent of those people. Um, so you just, oh, we're going to increase property owners. They, they owe us that. And so what ends up happening is you drive hardworking people out. And then even now to be intellectually honest, prices have gone up in the Twin Cities. Again, that's because we've printed off more money. Right. But also, and this is not to get too much into uh, municipal analysis, uh, big cities always have a perpetual bailout in that there's always future younger generations that want to go to where all the action is. And so they go to college, they go to the nightclubs, they go to the bars and the restaurants, but they pay and they pay. I don't know if any younger people notice this. You pay an egregious amount of rent to live in yeah. these cities. Yeah. And uh, as, as well as tuition. And so that's what they kind of rely on. So you will have, and then those rents drive up and uh, drive up investment from uh, real estate developers, but it's now of the apartment variety or the condo variety. And so you never, you never have a core group of citizens, except for the parasitic class that are just living off the government dole and living in crappy neighborhoods. Uh, but you have a, you have a transitory class of people that come in for all the nightlife, the younger people, generation of people, but they inevitably leave before they make good money. And then they go out where suburbs, different town, maybe a friendly major city like Dallas. And yeah. that's where you start to see genuine economic growth, as well as you start to see decay within certain cities for like example, Detroit, I think would probably be one of the furthest down the rabbit hole in this regard, but Cleveland to lead any, any Ohio city is crap. Um, <clears throat> other Oh, I'm trying to figure out uh, Milwaukee, Chicago is kind of becoming this way. It's, it's super a slow just came in. This guy's yeah. in Chicago. It says, I live in Chicago. Thanks for the five bucks. It says the entitlement to other people's money is astonishing plan is to work in America, but fly live in a cheap Latin American country. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think the guys with the brains uh, are the ones brains in the balls really are the ones that are leaving America in droves because they're, you know, they're the smart people are getting out of America the ones that are relatively smart are leaving, you know, New York, California, places that are just insanely hard to get ahead. In my opinion, like the high taxes, the high fucking rent, traffic, traffic yeah. alone. These idiots waste three, four hours a day in traffic. Yeah. No, no. And that's and yeah. And I would say, as as the donator pointed out, the the ideal and maybe one day I'll get there is to generate your income in, in not just one first world, but several first worlds, you know, mm -hmm. don't just be relying on one country, but if you could get German clients and American clients and British clients or Japanese clients, mm -hmm. go get them. And then you live in a, whichever, whichever country you like, Oh, you like Paraguay. Okay. Or you like uh, uh, Thailand or you like the Philippines or you like Dubai, although that's a pretty expensive place to live. Um, you can have a first world income. Yep. with third or second world cost of living and your your standards of living mm -hmm. um, tr triple without you having to work harder you just move yep. no 
in the, in the honor of uh, of the Twin Cities, I brought in another Minnesotan. Uh, we, <laughs> Charlie, from Cultivate that Crypto. When, when did we get the Eiffel Tower in Minneapolis? I didn't know we had the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> uh, that's the Tokyo no, it, Tower. Oh, Tokyo. Yeah. Tokyo. Sorry. We, uh, got, we Tokyo. got Rapungi Hills over here. We got Bump uh, Fuji on over here. But yeah. Yeah. No, I just figured to bring on someone else to, to kind of have the trifecta, traditional economist, uh, the crypto expert, and uh, the guy who wears sunglasses at night. Um, yeah. <laughs> with this trio, uh, this motley crew, we could we could give you some solid financial advice. Uh, welcome, Charlie. How you doing, bud? Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, and we had a good conversation back when was it? March, April, May, sometime around there when we had uh, Aaron on the show. That was on the Tug the Crypto show. I remember for uh, one episode a while back there. That was a it was a good conversation we had. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's when he, Aaron was saying like how just the onboarding for crypto is a little bit tougher. But we're oh, we're, yeah, we're gonna we we're, 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 were gonna talk about um just this this one point nine trillion dollars um asset inflation and just what's going on um because. This <laughs> this money that's being printed is uh, similar to something uh, Aaron mentioned in his book. Uh, Enjoy the decline, you know. Just kind of like uh, a- again, it hate. I mean, Aaron, let me ask you this real quick. Obviously, the being even realistically optimistic for the future in America, it's um, it's going to be very hard to find like uh, I, to be really really optimistic. I mean. What is the what is the end game? What do you think? Like, let's say twenty years from now, what does the day to day American life look like for the average person? I th- I think uh, maybe not twenty years, but 30, 40 years, where I think it will kind of uh, plateau or stabilize. Is we're going to look like Brazil? We're going to be a, a solid second world country with some productive economic capacity, but we're going to be highly corrupt. There's going to be different racial groups, uh, and that, it may even be worse than Brazil. Uh, because I don't think Brazil has the media, the education system, the nonprofit industry, uh, teachers and the government actively pitting. It's not even a long race, but different groups of people against one another. Uh, now, I don't know about Brazil, but I don't think their women hate their men, at least yet to the level uh, that they do in the United States and some other Western countries. Right. But in terms of standards of living, you're going to have, you know, a pretty moderately corrupt somewhat functional economy. Uh, you're going to be happy with 2% economic growth. They're going to print off money. There'll be inflation. Um, yeah. I, well, <laughs> we're going to be a fat Brazil. Now that I think about it because I don't see, I don't see, I don't see women or men losing the weight. Uh, so maybe we'll be worse off than Brazil, but there'll be such a lack of, and we could talk economics all the time, but, uh, how much money you got in your bank accounts? Only one thing. I think the, there's going to be a lack of uh, community or culture. Like it will no longer be American. It'll be, well, I'm Hispanic American and I'm female American. I'm a uh, Caucasian American or all right. these. Th- and it's those, and there's it's just the social media is just going to be poisoning cancer, which it already is to that. You're going to be more worried about, well, what are the other groups of people going to say about me today? And I can't believe those groups of people don't like me or because I'm, I'm this skin color, I, I have that gender or whatever. And so I think there'll be a very demoralizing, um, complete divestment from one's culture where it's just like, get the F out of here. This is my little community. Why would I, you know, like for example, I mean, you already see it happening. Aside from Californians, I think everybody hates Californians, like intensely yeah. hates Californians. Like, oh, yeah. I, I, yeah. I don't think anybody likes people from Portland or Seattle. We hate uh, Californians here in Japan when we see the Americans because yeah. the nearest America to us other than Hawaii is California. We have to deal with those idiots all the time. Just like, can this guy? I, I would right. say, you know, people on the coasts are kind of worse overseas than they are even in America. That's saying something. Yeah. So I, I think it'll be like that. Um I don't think the United States will necessarily collapse or dissolve. Mm-hmm. Um, some groups of people are like, well, California will never leave. Their parasitic people need the rest of the productive people inland. Yeah. Same thing with New York. Uh, so I, I think that will, well, we already had a civil war where some states tried to leave and, and, and the union decided that's not going to happen. So I think it will maintain itself as one single uh, country, but it's going to look nothing like it was, you know, from say 1940 to the 1960s where it was the dominant mm-hmm. global economic superpower with great economic growth, decreasing debt, um, technological innovation, hot, thin women that wore dresses. 
which is the most radical thing, you know, ever. And men that weren't just a bunch of saps. I mean, that's, we're going to be a fat, lazy Brazil. That's what we'll do. Yeah. Now, um, do you, do you think there's anybody, do you think this is just organically happening or do you think that, um, you know, this is a cause and effect or was this planned? Do you think China's behind it? I personally think China's behind it. No, this has been happening long before that. It's I think it's human nature. Not to say there hasn't been foreign agents or influence that that obviously had their own political agendas. But this is simply and this is happening across different countries and it'll happen around all, all countries inevitably. Um, you have politicians mm -hmm. putting forth platforms that plays to human laziness. Mm -hmm. Uh so this this is just the natural way that humans go as we produce more and more stuff because there is more and more stuff we're producing. There are genuine economic and uh, technological advances. But food is is the per perfect thing. I remember far back enough when food was a significant percent of the family budget. Clothes were the same thing. We had not yet gotten the, the yield technology to the levels we do today or we hadn't even outsourced our textile and, and clothes manufacturing. So I remember like you would darn your socks. My mom would... So, you know, oh gosh, and if you came home with a hole in your jeans, oh, were you in so much trick? Because jeans were expensive back then. You are in a lot of trouble. Now, food is essentially free. Yeah. And you you can you can just look at the human reaction to it. The reaction is let's get fat. Yeah. They they have and so that tells me this is more uh psychological, Darwinistic, evolutionary. And as we have more and more things produced for us, more and more, we are just gonna be you know what it is exactly. You guys see Wally. -E? Yeah, oh, yeah. Where, yep. where every generation of the people in the starship kept getting fatter and fatter. <laughs> that that's what it is. I don't. I mean, <clears throat> certainly the Democrats and leftists and socialists and labor are are capitalizing on this trend, or this human biological fact. But it's it's nothing planned. It's it's very simple. It's like you know, hey Charlie. I'll pay you a hundred bucks to punch John. And Charlie's like, okay, you know, because hey, who doesn't want the hundred bucks? It, it doesn't hurt Charlie. So that's I, I don't I don't think it's that nefarious, but there are certainly evil, vile forces that are capitalizing off of it. Yeah. No, one thing I was just gonna add on top of that is kind of interesting. Um, looking at different people who've kind of been calling not the end of Western society, but just kind of how you know, just trying to look at the progression of society is over time. Cause I think what Aaron's talking about here is, is pretty forward thinking in terms of, you know, um, I think a lot of people try to deny um, that America's kind of going down the tubes and yeah. going in this direction. Um, which when you look at the, what's happening with the money printing and stuff, it's just 2020 was the biggest year of just red flags everywhere showing us that this is indeed happening. But uh, one guy who I thought uh, I just, was really interesting because um, I guess if you go with Wally and like the more recent media um, with um, what's that movie called uh, Idiocracy, all this stuff, you know, just playing out exactly as <laughs> like our worst nightmare, right? <laughs> Basically. And, um, but one guy who called this actually before the industrial revolution really took uh, form was actually Nietzsche, um, the philosopher, right? He actually, if you go back into some of his stuff, um, before he went insane, before, of course, the later term of his life, um, he actually was talking about how the end of industrialism will lead people to essentially be dependent on machines. And that's kind of what idiocracy gets at, what Wally was getting at, and what um, we're kind of going towards with this digital economy. Um, everything will be digital, everything will be convenient, everything will be easier. And according to the IMF, um, you will own nothing and you'll be happy about it, <laughs> which is absolutely right. ridiculous. And this whole world we're going towards is going to be like, uh, Aaron saying here is going to be completely different. I don't even think we understand how it will look. Um, but yeah, kind of, you have to roll with the punches here as that comes. Um, what parts of it can we take advantage of as like a, you know, dystopian society? If, if it does go that way, how can we win? in that type of society and i think you know focusing on the digital world and how we can leverage this area to make money um, for ourselves as individuals will allow us as individuals to you know do what we want in this world but that's not going to be the advantage for everybody because most people are like he says too lazy to gotta go figure that out and i would i would even argue that uh, certainly we could talk about different ways to capitalize financially the real <clears throat> challenge, especially for people tuning in here who are going to have a slightly different, unique intellect, to actually think independent mindly, is how are you just going to culturally and sociologically interact with your fellow man? Like we're already seeing that now. You go online dating mm -hmm. and you have 
worth I'm, <clears throat> this i'm not trying to i'm not trying to be pejorative or insulting i'm trying to be descriptive you have truly worthless women <laughs> fat with tats nose rings other people's kids acting like hey, man, man, you better move, move. And like lady you aren't jennifer aniston in 1998 and there's a billion of you but that is like you cannot even function with these people um yeah. I can't even find friends to like go have a beer with. I can't get guys to go climb up a mountain, uh, let alone go on a four mile hike. Uh, so you're with all these trials and tribulations and hard work where the, where now the robots take care of everything. It is suffering and trial and tribulation that formed very interesting people. So I think our stock of interesting uh, people, you know, actual good character, uh, and I don't even want to say moral, just interesting or forged people that is going to dwindle. And soon you'll just have a sea of every dope doing TikTok videos. Uh, with their own. I mean, it's, it's just going to be uh, a horribly boring intellectual life. So that's, I think, is what's going to be the, the real hard existential problem going forward in the United States. Not necessarily money or in the, in the world even. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily money. But Jesus, can I have a smart cut? Like, can I turn on the TV and it not be orange as the new black? The third, <laughs> you know, yeah. like... Uh, TV's hopeless now. I mean, just yes, there's oh, yeah. it's trash. It's oh, trash. Uh, Alex I watched, Martino, uh, with the two dollar yeah, super chat says the balkanization of the USA. <laughs> Yikes! Uh, go ahead, uh, Charlie. Go ahead, buddy. No, I just uh, some of the commercials, right? Because like uh, one way that I kind of keep track of what's happening in America in terms <laughs> of you know just general media is like just watching commercials during NFL games, right? It's just. You watch and you see just the ridiculousness of this. Uh, there's, I think, the one show recently that came out was like name that tune or something. It's like they play like five seconds of a song. You're supposed to guess what it is. I'm just like, I see that commercial. I'm just like, wow, that looks absolutely terrible. And yet I know probably about 20 different people that are going to watch that thing as soon as it comes out. And I'm just like, oh, man. <laughs> did, you, did you guys see the Jeep commercial during the Super Bowl? No, we saw the M and M one when the guy hands the girl a bag of M and M's and says, "Sorry for mansplaining." <laughs> D did he? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. See that that crap? It, it's like no. I just I'm not watching. And I wonder TV why anymore. NFL ratings are falling. I wonder. I wonder. Yeah. No. It was. It. It's. It's stuff. But yeah, Charlie was exactly right. You just if you can watch TV without gouging your eyes out, just watch it as an academic study and you'll mm. see just the average IQ of the average person <laughs> tanking, just take. Yep. I, it's just when you, when you just look at everything. So uh, how can I say this? The, the, your best way to survive in this circumstance, Cappy, is to get a, a degree in something like, computer science or learning a skill that's not going to go away. And like, it may not be glamorous, but again, if it came, if it came down to like, if I lost everything and it came down to me being a plumber and becoming an expert plumber or having some cool white collar job where I make $45,000 a year, I'm going to go with the plumber. If, if it's down to these two things, because plumbing, look, that's, that's it, been, here and it's not going away and automation is not coming for that for people a very like poo there's a high yeah. demand for people that like to poo. exactly you know what i mean and so but you know everybody wants to go get the four-year degree and like you know uh business administration or uh you know pff, what are the most philosophy useless shit and then they come out and they they're they have no skills. They have debt, and then they're like, "Oh, well, what isn't somebody who to get angry at? The rich people. They did this, <laughs> right? Right. It's the evil. It's the evil Senate Republicans who made you know who took your three hundred dollars of credit and charged you three hundred fifty <laughs> bucks for a tax. Yeah, it was it was uh whatever his name, Mitch O'Connell or Mitch McConnell or whatever. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, the the way to now keep in mind when I when I approach wealth, I approach it in terms of free time. I do not yes, no, necessarily, exactly, yeah, exactly. I do not necessarily care about number of dollars in my account. To protect I mean, I do. yourself from poverty is my main thing. Right. How, how right. can you safeguard yourself against poverty? Right. Have, have an indispensable skill. Mm -hmm. um, now, as time has gone on, uh, and of course with the internet, you would, there's the ideal is to have an in-demand skill that you could do from anywhere in the world. So you're not, and that's a very narrow niche of the jobs out there, but you're looking predominantly in IT computers, programming like that. Um, <clears throat> also if you're a CPA or a good accountant or an accredited accountant in your country, that's another thing you can do. Uh, but barring that having a skill that's in demand, 
mm -hmm. uh, like a trade yeah. uh, that will that will. But now you're, you're you can no longer be a digital nomad and you can't just flee to another country and start making money from from global sources of revenue. You're very de dependent on that local economy. And right. frankly, I'm sure the Plumbers Guild or union in Thailand is is not going to be happy if you just open up, you know, <laughs> big dick American Joe's American plumbing. Uh -huh. right. We'll get right. your pipes clean. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, so, but yes, you're going to be way better off. My favorite is so now I'm gonna I made it in whatever completely low IQ dumb crap communications sociology international I'm I try to find myself I'm gonna go overseas and teach English so they go over there for a hot six months and they come back why because they can't survive they don't have the yes skill. and they come back and they need mommy and dad soon they're thirty five you see if you want to avoid that don't major in the liberal arts yep don't major in the social sciences. Yep. As usually I say, go STEM or go home. But yes, Gabby, having indispensable skills is what is going to help you. Let me tell you something. You don't, you probably don't know about this, but when when American guys come over to Japan, like they, for the most part, they can keep it together for like, you know, three to five years. And then they're like, okay, I'm going to stop being a loser English teacher. They do something else and stay here or they go back home, right? right. Western chicks, dude, <laughs> two years max, they make it here. Two Six years. Six months a lot of the time, yeah. <laughs> And you know what it is? It's because the Japanese guys, it's the hard. Japanese guys ignore them. They cannot compete. They get blown out of the water by the average Japanese girl. The average Japanese girl, Cappy, is stunning. She's thin. She's feminine. She cares about her appearance. She doesn't hate her dad. She has a family and community <laughs> is a normal thing. She will probably, if she's your coworker and she relatively likes you. So in Japan, this is how it works. So on Valentine's Day, mm -hmm. girls give chocolates to guys that they like. And then on uh, March 14th, one, one month later is white day. And the guys choose to reciprocate to the girls. If they want to, you could be nice, but go, oh, you know, Jill brought me chocolate. I'll, I'll bring her one. Or if like the, you know, the fucking hot secretary that you've been wanting to bang brings one. You're like, okay, this is my Giggity. publicly, publicly <laughs> acceptable move here. Um, but, but you know, they just do it. That's just the, the gender's, are okay with it. And always like, oh, you know, like this guy bought me some roses and that's sexual harassment. And then, okay, we got to stop, uh, you know, white day. And shut, we gotta shut, shut down, down the whole factory too while you're at it, you know. And, and yeah. they just don't deal with that over here. So I think like, you know, and then, and to top it off, they, Japanese people work very hard and Americans typically have a tough time showing up on time, keeping up with the pace, living up to the Japanese standards. Because a lot of these guys are losers. They come from California because it's pretty near, right? Um, the ones that typically survive here a long time, Texans, Floridians, New Yorkers do well here. Um, you know, those are the ones that are typically good. Charlie eked his way through being a Minnesota. No, he's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but you know, the culture is it, it demands uh, a little grit to stay here. And a lot of these chicks, I remember one chick, she was late for this training, right? I had to go work at Sesame Street for a while. And I was in the training. She was in training. I knocked my presentation out the fucking park, right? Um, she's there. She shows up 30 minutes late. She's like, well, I'm late because I had uh, an anxiety problem. And my anxiety, we got really bad. And that's why I couldn't be here. And I was just like, I just looked at the trainer. And the trainer was this Canadian Chinese chick. I hooked up with her. But uh, she, we just both looked at each other. We're just like, this bitch is retarded. And, uh, you know, that was just, she was completely vindicated in her mind. I was having a panic attack, so I right. couldn't come to this corporately appointed and, business deal that I signed a contract to get involved with. In. Yeah, that's and that's what I'm talking about, where it's not necessarily going to be finances. It will have a financial re uh, ramification, but where you are so spoiled and s came from such a wealthy suburb or had so much government money thrown at you that you think an anxiety attack is a reason to be 30 minutes late to a company meeting. Yeah. Uh, this is the low quality caliber of people I'm talking about. How do you function with, with that girl and in due time when 90% of the population is like that girl? Like when I get people on my consulting uh, uh, company and it's usually men, well, I'm, I'm socially anxious and I got <laughs> diagnosed with this and that. And I tear into them. I beat the ever living crap. I'm like, don't you dare give me this crap. But da, 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 da. Stop being a pussy. Stop being a whining little bitch. Get your ass out there. And don't you ever use this excuse with me again or anyone else. <clears throat> and that's the first time anyone's yelled at them. But yes, this, this pampering yep. 
is exactly what what I fear in, in the future society for first world countries, Western countries. Well, that's also why it's hard for people amid this, you know, the, the pandemic or whatever you want to call it when, you know, they have a hard time in a lot of the physical location places where, you know, the easy jobs like being a waiter, the mindless jobs, you know, going into a retail store, stocking shelves, whatever, Best all buy. those jobs going away as, you know, businesses decline uh, in terms of, you know, what's happening in the States right now. You have a hard, uh, a lot of people having a hard time shifting into a digital economy. Uh, and that would be one way where a lot of people can actually, you know, thrive during this type of time um, where maybe uh, money seems hard to go but get by um, for a lot of people. But like what Aaron's say saying here, like just as like a foreign country, as an example, right? when you come to a foreign country and you use all these excuses of things are too hard, I don't have a uh, you know, um, enough perseverance, enough willpower to actually succeed in different things. When you have, when you're living in a country where, um, you know, the language isn't your own, right? You already have some obstacles. If you can live there for longer than a, a few months to a few years, right. And not melt down, then you generally are able to kind of work outside the bounds of society. Um, but for most people, they can't do that. And then when it comes to, right, okay, now I have to work digitally. I don't have to be in an office where people are telling me what to do 24 seven, um, I actually have to manage my own schedule, all these things. A lot of these people uh, just kind of like melt, right? They just, they suck at what they do. And there's so much opportunity in the digital world to make money wherever you are, where, whenever you want, however you want, but just yeah. people aren't using enough critical thinking like you're mentioning here um, in the rest of society right now to be able to take advantage of that trend, which is unfortunate. And I'd, I'd like to just point out a, a story. I think it, would, it would, he had Andrew Tate on his show, and um, mm -hmm. it was a Rolo or the Dick Masterson. I forgot who, but they're interviewing Andrew Tate, and they're talking about uh, the compensation that Andrew Tate gave to his webcam girls. And I think it was Rolo asked, so what is it, a 50% 50, 50 cut? And Andrew Tate looked at him and said, you could hear the look. It was such a look over the internet. And I didn't actually see the look, but you could hear the look. And he says, no, I just pay him 1000 bucks a month. He's like, so yeah. you keep 90%? He's like, look, here's the deal. These girls don't want to do any work. They don't want to learn the IT. They don't want to do the filming. They don't want to connect to the internet. They don't want to set up username. They just want, and it's the perfect example. You can have the most precious commodity in the world. I'm being deadly serious. Female youth and beauty. Mm -hmm. And you're so lazy, you can't monetize it. And yeah. so you're willing to fork over 90% <laughs> of your earnings potential because, you know, Herman and IT, knows how to program a little bit of code on a website and um you you nailed it there charlie it's like there is i'm I'm amazed how much opportunity there is i have more ideas now than i have life expectancy to pursue with different internet digital <clears throat> ways to make money but i i am just appalled where i see men and women where they decide, well, they're what they're going to do on the internet is play video games mm -hmm. or a girls like, well, I'm going to get a fans only account, but I'm just going to show up like, where's the money? It's like, yeah. you put any effort into it. Did you dress up in an outfit? Do you do, do you have a shtick? Do you have a, a show? Uh, like our, uh, buskers, you know how buskers in the olden days, like the street performers that you'd have to come up with a pretty good routine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or if you've ever walked down, uh, Fremont street in Vegas, you know, there's some people who got a pretty good act going on. You're like, okay, that's pretty. Good. Then there's the, I saw one gal and here's, here's your average, you know, millennial Gen Z or no effect to you, offense to you guys. Mm -hmm. This gal's like retired uh, stripper. And she was in a thing, a thong bikini thing, but she was about 300 pounds and in a wheelchair. <laughs> it's like, okay, if that's the effort you're going to put in, I expect you're not going to make a lot of money. So that that's, great. that's tragically the work ethic that you see today with a, with a weak generation of people. Well, and coming back to America, I think John probably had this when he came back just for, you know, Christmas and everything, you get this weird reverse culture shock and it gets worse and worse every time. Like we come back uh, to America. Uh -huh. I was last uh -huh. back in, <laughs> in December of 2019. Uh, I was, you know, and me and John at that time, we're like, you know, we've been in Japan a while. Maybe it's, you know, time to consider moving back to America. And then 2020 happened. And you're like, yeah, no, no <laughs> but no, you know what, when I came back, one of the things that I just thought was absolutely hilarious was the fact that now even the mannequins are starting to get a little bit obese. Oh, I'm just yeah. like, are you kidding me going actually to change the mold of the plastic for the mannequins so that you can put an, a plus sized, whatever on, on people. And then you have these 
like you know i didn't even know about tess holiday until john showed me this shit and i was just like oh. you, you're absolutely ridiculous right right you're kidding me right and you start seeing these people on advertisements in the states and i come back i'm just like people in japan would be like like why do you have that person as a model that person's fat and in japan they're right people come up to you and be like yeah you're fat right and it's okay for them to say it like because it's it's just the honest truth and it's like you should probably lose some weight you should probably actually be a little bit healthier and um yeah you're like oh thanks for that i actually appreciate that because you know that helps you know keep people in line that's what japanese people do but in america right oh my god like you offended me so much it's just like to me it seems ridiculous right being out of america for so long and just looking at it from the outside but then when you come back and you're just like has it really fallen this far from the tree it's just like god damn yeah it's crazy you know cappy i want to tell you something too mm. because uh as far as like hitting the youtube algorithm goes you're terrible at it but that being said your live viewership and your all your stuff that you've been putting out lately you know your views are just is so good compared to like you know what you could be doing and i think that what you're saying is resonating i don't, I don't think you're just attracting a bunch of psychos I think you have a voice that a lot of people have going on in their head because they've just logically deduced this. And they're like, am I a psycho? Am I crazy? Am I alone? And I think the internet is bringing more of these. It's, it sounds terrible. It sounds like the perfect CNN headline, but disgruntled <laughs> red pilled men. And uh, that are, that are, you know, the difference between us and the guys who, you know, kind of tend more to go to the MGTOW side is the MGTOW guys, they, they look at the problems and they bitch about them. Our side, we look at the problems like, okay, how do we adapt? How do we survive? How do There's I some keep... solutions? Right. Yeah. How, like what are the answers to the problems? And that's the difference between boys and men. And that's just my opinion there. Um, but I think, you know, cause even me, like I, I'm a content creator and I like, you know, I tell myself like, you know, you can't be going around watching everybody's stuff because you got to focus on creating your own. But even I, I get sucked into your stuff because what it is, I think the video request stuff you do is good. And then titles, are relevant to things that I think as an American man and Charlie thinks, and even Mac, the day gamer, he's an Irish guy. He, we all talk about this, this global, uh, like anti white male, anti freedom kind of SJW, anti white SJW movement, and like anti traditional anything, anti success. People. Just put, I mean, anti success mm. because, um, I have a fair amount of, of black clients, and man, some of the heart wrenching stories I get where little you know little jamal wants to make it out of the ghetto and his own mm -hmm. parents turn on him and become uncle toms and tell him you can't do that how dare you lose the yeah so it's it define it it's anti-success that's yeah. really what it is mm -hmm. they get mad at you they you know i they have do. i have people now that are like i can, i'm starting to see like i've gotten to a kind of a level a, a, an okay level of success to the point that i've i'm starting to see leeches pop up in my life that i never would expect to even I would yep. think people would have more shame to, to to act like this, and I'm just like, yikes! No, no wonder rich people hide themselves in private communities and country clubs, and you know, keep the peasants away because uh, that human, that human, that laziness that you know that that's built into us, really. Um, it's no bueno. Oh, looks like uh, somebody sent you a. Sam Whiskey said at twenty four ninety nine. So it looks like okay, Cappy, look out for Hot Dude and Charlie. They made John McAfee cry. We did make John McAfee cry. <laughs> How did you wait? <laughs> the, the, the software guy? Yeah, yeah, he was on the Tokyo Crypto Show with us. What'd you do? How'd you make him cry? He, we asked, he made we asked some compelling questions. <laughs> <laughs> you got to go back and watch the episode. Is absolutely isn't brilliant. he like sixty years old? It's eighty it's like seventy. He he's 80? in oh. Spanish. He's in jail in Spain now for running again. Uh, away from taxes or something. Yeah. Yeah, right, yeah. Cappy, it looks like somebody sent me 24.99 so i gotta send you 20 bucks for the deluxe pokeball yeah i like that pokeball. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, you, better, you better think about me when you're eating before you say your grace you better say I, grace to me too <laughs> the day i say grace to you this is the day i <laughs> shave my nuts in. <laughs> so, that's the way it should be <laughs> a lot of a lot of a lot of super chats are coming right now let me read them off real quick right. um al $10 Super Chat says, America is way worse than you guys think. People are actively trying to get other people fired now. My own car got vandalized multiple times for having different opinions. I didn't say anything wild, too. You know what's crazy? Thank you for the $10. I wanna, I'm going to make a comment on this because I know uh, you guys are history buffs. This is exactly what happened in Nazi Germany. 
um, at the peak of, of Nazi control. The neighbors were ratting on each other. And, and what's funny is that this also happened during uh, the time of World War II in Japan. Neighbors would snitch on each other, be like, oh, you know, he's not that loyal to the emperor. He doesn't want to, he doesn't believe we should go fight. And they would fucking go in there, seize all your items, take all your metal, liquefy it at the factory because Japan had no natural resources. They would take you out. They would fucking hang you or cut your head off if for, uh, for, for all because your neighbor snitched on you. And that's, that's the biggest thing that's happening right in America is the cannibalization of the people. And it's really led by an army of Karens and an army of beta provider dudes that are fucking backing them up at, at every step of the way and adding laws and adding regulations and, and de- further. It's like when in America, like in America is like when in doubt, blame men. Like what, you know, wh- how did men get this problem? That just seems to be public enemy. Number one, if you're a chick, America is the best place in the world to be right now. You can get whatever the fuck you want. It's except the, the hot country. man. Yeah. You can, you know. Right. Except for a good looking guy, but you get everything else. Um, but as America, as a man, you're played on hard mode. And, um, yeah, I just think the cannibalization of the like Japanese people really stick together, and it's because they're a homogenous society. Chinese, the Koreans are very galvanized people. They've been fucking bullied their entire history. They're finally now getting some clout, but they stick together very big time. You know, the Vietnamese, Thailand. You go to street, you and you go to Thailand, and you're not you don't have fun at the ping pong show, and you punch the bouncer. You didn't punch the bouncer. You punch that entire village in the face. And they're coming for you. <laughs> you know, you don't win a fight in Thailand. But that you don't see that in America. It's so it's so fractured. No, because because what we've done is the there was a, a American culture and homogeneity that that we did have at one time, <clears throat> and thankfully it was our culture because like well we didn't care if you're Irish or Jewish or, or black or whatever. I mean you come here you become an American, so that was our culture. Now because if I would say nothing short of forty years of of uh, K through college even education, uh, we have made it that. The culture, the number one thing in our culture is uh, socialism. I don't mean that necessarily in an economic sense, but uh, certainly you see it's a very whichever variant of socialism, whatever ism within socialism, that is what's most important to you. So feminism, obviously, some women are just all about the fact they were born with a particular genitalia. They didn't earn it or nothing. They didn't go down to the factory and build themselves a, a one. They just were born that way. Uh, people are obsessed about their race. They're obsessed about their culture, or their uh, ethnicity, um, and or the racism. Or you could also talk about just general social socialism itself, where people like, I'm so proud that I, and if you aren't uh, Trump or whatever, swipe right, swipe left, whatever. And it's like, yeah, but you don't do anything. Yeah. Having a belief, you know, okay, let's say you were a Christian. Okay, good for you. That doesn't mean you're of any value to society. You have to do something for society. And so <clears throat> what you're sadly witnessing, John, is this, we are going into idiocracy, but I like to call it idiocracy with vengeful, hateful people mm. because they have nothing else in their lives. I mean, these people literally have, they've never been challenged. They've never had to go through trials and tribulations. They've been, and, and they've been told it's, they, they're entitled to whatever. So they fail to grow as human beings. They fail to turn into interesting, let alone full grown adults. And the only thing they got is this Marxist leftist psychopathic ideology that we're sold or what, you know, environmentalism, feminism, I'm going to fight for social justice, whatever. And since they got nothing else, they are effing fanatics over it. And they have no problems getting you fired, doxing you, slashing your tires. And the day might come that they kill you. It might actually happen, but that is what you're, it's not going to be funny like idiocracy. It's going to be a bunch of dumb people that want to kill you because simply because you got more than them. That's yep. all it's going to boil down to. Yep. Yeah. I mean, um, just look at I mean, Jeff Bezos, right? They, there was already some people putting guillotines on his lawn and shit like that. It's like absolutely insane. And he's, yep. he's a lefty. You know, he's a lefty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, let me go through some super chats real quick. Pablo Busco with a $5 uh, super chat says, if the military is pussified, what are modern young men's choices for rites of passage to becoming a man? By the way, Cappy, do you like Whole Foods? Um. I mean, I'm not against Whole Foods. I mean, if you want to say, oh, yeah, it's organic and charge three times the amount, go ahead. You know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to stop anyone to do that. Uh, but I, I, I personally I dislike a lot Whole Foods. And the, the reason is very simple. You walk in there and it stinks. And I don't know if it's because of the food they're selling or the people that are shopping there. But 
Um, I've only been in there once because I had to go buy something and the aisles stank. I think it's both the combination of like organic stuff and patchouli and the people <laughs> were pretentious. And I'm like, man, I really, they've never done anything to me, but I want to punch about 85% <laughs> of the people in this place. And I'm like, I just don't need this agitation. So I, I very much dislike Whole Foods, but I, I have no problem with uh, organic grocers or people opening up stores like that. You know, I, I just won't go in there. And what do you think about his statement there when he says, what are some, like, did you have a rite of passage? Yeah. Like, what did you do? Pablo's got a great question because there, there is no, there are no real men anymore. And I do yeah. mean that baby boomer men and on. Uh, I mean, we know, and I'd say we're pretty masculine or we've certainly blazed our own path, but in part because most men are pussies nowadays uh, and that your mom is going to divorce your dad usually 50% of the time or there's going to be strife. And certainly <clears throat> you're not allowed to be a masculine man any, anymore. Yeah, You cannot rely on your elders, uh, uh, male elders, to set you down this galvanizing uh, path of... Uh, of a rite of passage and it's going to be self-imposed uh my galvanizing rite of passage was going through college working full-time and going to school full-time i nearly starved it was a miserable existence i would patrolled outside for the u of m security police uh, team uh and it it's always below zero in winter it was an absolutely horrible existence uh but that forged me into this wonderful tolerant not jaded and totally not angry at the world person that apparently everybody likes so much. Um, so that, you know, some people went to war. Uh, I think if you join the military and get sent to battle, you'll get galvanized whether you want it or not. Yeah. But it's really going to be your own path. And so you have to force yourself to go to the gym, major in tough subjects. Um, I would not starve yourself because you save money instead of eating. Um, but you know, going on adventures, climbing mountains, uh, physical feats of endurance and, and pain, uh, living out in the wilderness for a month, uh, something like that is you're going to have to seek that out and do it yourself. Now, I think, uh, the pursuit of excellence and independence, like here's, here's a perfect galvanizing experience. That is such a traumatizing experience now to Gen Z boys. Uh, I think most would have a, a panic attack and cry back home to the mommies and daddies. But here, here's something basic every young man can do. Move out of your parents' effing place and don't take none of their money. Yeah. Truly support yourself. Yeah. If you just do that, like you could pay food, clothing, rent, and shelter, and you could pay for your own car, your own transportation, your own phone. Uh, <clears throat> you do that for two or three years, you'll go, for example, you guys, you went to a completely different culture. And, and of course, maybe you had a little bit of money saved up and you're not 18 or anything, but that was also somewhat of a, a forging process. But I'd say now for every man, the basic rite of passage is if you want to choose it, leave home and don't rely on your parents ever again. And you'll definitely, you know, maybe you won't become our Ernest Shackleton, uh, but you will become much more of a man than any Gen Z or, or millennial alive today. That, that, that you'll be a man. You'll be a man. Yeah. yeah. Getting people to stay out of debt and actually support themselves and like ha have themselves as an actual, like a, a gain on society. Like that should be the normal requirement of every human being. But now that that's like a tall ask in society is just, <laughs> you know, uh, just a good reflection of the state of affairs there. Let me power through these super chats real quick. Colonel Sanders, uh, five dollar super chats. John, the left hates anyone who seeks success and masculinity. They pretend to love minorities. That is a sent by a black man. So don't you dare disagree with him, you racist. <laughs> uh, David T, five dollar super chat. Intelligence isn't average by definition. Don't apologize for it. I will forgive you for spelling apologize with an S and not a Z. Um, but we all is forgiven. The competent man, five dollar super chat says to me, looks like we're sliding towards an 1850s type of bleeding Kansas situation where people inform on anyone that has a different opinion. Yeah, it's already happening. Uh, Instagram is monitoring all um text messages going on inside of their platform for those who are saying they're not going to take the vaccine. So, uh, you know. It's just it's an interesting uh, clown world that, that we're in. Cappy, what do you think? I think I've asked you this already, but I want to ask your opinion of, you know, kind of like uh, get like a futurist uh, opinion on it. Do you see us going back to a maskless world and like 
you know, people go to Oof. football games and, hey, well, we're going to hang out by the river or we're going to go to the beach <laughs> or we're going to go to the lake. Thankfully, uh, some we have states' rights in the United States still. So some states have that. Florida, South Dakota, where I'm moving, Utah. Um, mm -hmm. People can choose it. Um, you moving to Utah? No, no, no. I've, I've just Utah doesn't have a mask state. Oh. I, I spent the better part of a month in Utah solely because of that. How'd you um, like it? I, heard you, I like Utah. Utah. Oh, Utah's, Utah's nice. Yeah, Utah is beautiful. It's it's the most pretty state in the United States. But the problem is it's very remote. And to go to the most pretty parts of the states like Zion or uh, Moab, you got to be rich because to live in those towns is very expensive. But mm. it's just, yeah, that's my my favorite place to go hiking. Um, A lot of Californians but, moving in. Yeah, well, because their country, their country, their country sucks. The, the hopefully, country Rob, California, uh, so. <laughs> hopefully Rob sorts them out. <laughs> yeah. Rob takes care of them. Uh, yeah, but it. <laughs> Uh, I, I do believe we're going to get there in certain countries, but it will not surprise me at all mm -hmm. that some countries, but more so in the United States, some states and certainly some cities, mm -hmm. because these municipal politicians are some of the most petty dictators ever. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. They are going to maintain masks uh, well a year into We're going to have masks. Some places will still have masks a year from now. Mm -hmm. And, oh, darn, will that hurt the NFL if major metropolitan areas who are left is still insist on having a, ma a mask? Oh, I think it will. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I, some places, yes, some places, no. Very interesting. I mean, yeah, I just think, um, I think, yeah, we're going to slowly get back to things. But the way the West is handling the pandemic versus the East. The East is, dude, like, you know, uh, Charlie, uh, when Cappy uh, got on here, he's just like, asked me, he's like, you know, you're the only person from Rule Zero that's happy on the panel. And I'm just like, <laughs> and, and he's just like, I, and I, I think. Just for the record, I didn't say the rest of them were slicing the wrist to press cider. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It just my happiness is, is outwardly noticed. And um, he, he wondered if being out here had something to do with it. And I got to say for sure, like when I went oh, back yeah. to America, I was getting de depressed. That's why I stayed inside. Just was, you know, smoking weed and eating fucking Reese's because <laughs> it was better than going out and communicating with the public. This is cheaper. It was more efficient. It was just like, no, why would I go? Because, you know what? One thing, Cappy, you remember when when you were my friend in America and we just talked about the funniest Simpsons episode or what Conan O'Brien said? Not every single conversation need to be mm. pervasively devolved into politic politics. Remember that when right. people didn't talk about politics, people don't the seem to realize in America. Eighties were great. Yeah. Even early two thousands before I, I Obama, should... you know, no. but now everybody is just, every moron has a political opinion. What, what did I say? They don't have anything else in life. Yeah. Mm. Like if you're a liberal arts major, you, you're a loser. You have nothing going on except yeah. your politics. Or your nonprofits or whatever. And that's that's all they have, John. I mean, you might as well be talking to this pen. This pen has more intellectual capacity than your average young American who's a college graduate from the liberal arts and the social sciences. Because this pen is going to lecture me about the same effing crap I've heard of since I, I was in grade school. So, yeah, it's it, there was a time back in the day. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry you guys missed the 80s. It was great. We rode bikes all over the place. We got in scrapes. We got took our bikes off jumps and sledding, and we watched Knight Rider and uh, B.A. Baracus and the Dukes of Hazard. No one cared that the 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 Confederate flag was on top of the General Lee. Everyone was like, I hope it goes off a jump. And that was every kid, black, white, Hispanic. No one even knew about the Civil War. But no, now because America is filled with such worthless people, such losers who have absolutely nothing left in their life. The yeah. programming they got to value this warped social uh, socialism ideology. That's why we can't have conversations outside of politics. Well, that's what it is. Exactly. It's just programming, right? So they just get programmed by TV, get programmed by the media, get programmed by the school, right? And mm -hmm. programmed for basically useless conversations or just regurgitating what they've heard without critically thinking about it. Like the the critical thinking skills that people are being taught, right? It's just gone down the drain. It's it's like here, just follow this exact plan of what we expect for everybody's lives and follow don't the ever food question. pyramid. Make sure you're eating eight to eleven yeah. slices of bread every day. <laughs> <laughs> eight to eleven servings of the of the the grains. Eight to eleven cups of rice every day. No wonder yep. everybody's so fucking fat. And it's and our then, own government then, sending us the shit. And then no financial education, like. Um, no zero absolutely zero like 
yeah, there used to be, you know, you'd actually like, you know, figure out, you know, your monthly expenses and stuff at school. He had home ec, right. To teach home you how ec, to do right, a balance, right. uh, you know, life and everything like that. And then just all of these things that were useful, right. Uh, when you were growing up that we had in school, uh, and maybe started going away, even when you were getting into college and stuff like that, just like it's totally gone away in terms of, uh, the, the programming that, that, you know, the younger generations hey, have Charlie. So, okay. <clears throat> Tina may not know to contribute to her an IRA. And she may not understand $180,000 in debt she has for a sociology degree, but she understands and can identify oppression. Okay. And that's really important, uh, Charlie. Oh yeah. It's, it's massively important. It affects her survival and quality of life every single day. Right. <laughs> oh, um, man. We got some, we got some super chats. We're going to, and then we're going to round, uh, round it up here. Uh, a couple of them are in here. We got uh, one second. That one's there. Uh, big vis, big vis, four nine seven five dollars super chats. When Cappy mentions Brazil, I always thought he meant the movie, where everything is tied up in endless bureaucracy. Good to know. Yeah, no, he's talking about the country. The country, yeah. Alex Patino, five dollars super chat. Cappy, I I never told you that Utah is the state I grew up in. I got recruited. I got recruited into the army out of Salt Lake City, Mexican. From Utah. All right. That's that's a I I I didn't know Alex was from there. Um, but yeah, he he had a great. There's some beautiful mountains in Salt Lake. He I I wonder if he's been to Vernal. But yeah, that's a big fun playground for any young man to grow up in. And the taxes are not bad, right? They don't have crazy taxes. Yeah, they're there. not they're not that bad. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, they do have an income tax, which I just wish they get rid of and instead have like a sale. I'm, I'm not depriving or begrudging a government to raise money. It's just like, why do you inconvenience your citizenry by having to fill out an effing form every year and do some dumbass math to calculate what they owe you? It's like, could you just increase the gas tax or could yeah. you just increase something else? Like just... But yeah, aside from that, uh, that income tax, uh, Utah's great. It's wonderful. Um, I'm trying to find one more donation we got here uh, from a left nemesis. He sent it into Streamlabs, but I can't seem to find it at the moment. Uh, we'll have to have you ask that to me uh, another time, and I'll ask to Cappy for you. Um, Cappy, listen, we gotta, I got to get going for my training. Uh, okay. Today's episode... Fantastic uh, viewership through the roof as usual. Uh, thank you so much for being here, guys. Uh, I put Cap a link to Cappy's book, Poor Richard's Retirement, in the description box below. It links to his Amazon store. You can find all of his books. I personally recommend The Curse of High IQ and Enjoy the Decline. Those are the two that I've read. Uh, also, The Book of Numbers is his latest book. Cappy, why don't you just give him a quick elevator pitch there? Yeah, the basically, if, if the topic is financial, I'd say my flagship book is called Bachelor Pad Economics. Actually, I got it right here. You can, and this is uh, a reference guide for boys to, up to men. Some, so from the age of 14 to death, it kind of guides you through all the financial decisions you'll make. Uh, <clears throat> the Book of Numbers is my most recent one that is also economics related because you will not spend any more resources, time, energy, or effort than your pursuit of women. And I do a cost-benefit analysis of the pursuit of women. Uh, that I would say is absolutely critically important because if you look at most men's lives who are destroyed or lessened in some capacity is because they married the wrong woman or spent too much time uh, chasing women. And another book I wrote that is not, um, not as popular is a book called how not to become a millennial. Uh, and that is especially germane to any young man out there, given the indoctrination you're getting and the lies you're getting, it goes and it looks at what the millennials did. And says, hey, do you not want to become them? Well, here's the mistakes they made. And so that it is a very uh, instructional book on how to look at how the world before you, what the consequences and ramifications are if you do not wake the F up and shuck this brainwashing. And using the millennials as kind of like a monkey see, monkey don't do comes up with a roadmap to kind of to get you to a life of independence. And then there's there's other books I got as well. You can find that online. But that those are those would be my most germane books to the topic of conversation we're having today. If they type in your name, which is in the bottom left hand corner, Aaron Clary into Amazon, your books will pop up for the most part. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Or and then uh yeah you'll find if you're on Amazon that will go to my author page. You could find all my books there. Awesome. Uh real quick company man five dollar super chat says why well, fill out forms what will all those bureaucrats do if we got rid of all that busy work? Think Yes Minister BBC series and Sir Humphrey. You're so right, dude. 
more dregs to drain on society. But hey, that's enough optimism for you today. I hope you <laughs> got a nice dose of reality, guys. Look, if you're watching this content and you're taking action to fix your life, you're probably gonna, you're probably going to be okay because that's how lost and just and just hopeless it is for the average American. Um, again, remember we said 2021 year of crypto fun, man. Uh, this oh, yeah. is year to take a look at this thing seriously. Um, the finances, the repercussions of printing 1.9 trillion, they're not going to be good. It, it's not. It's not. It just. There's not. Happy days are not ahead of you in America if you are not actively making a plan to escape and or uh, make your life better. It's going to get worse, and you have it's inevitable. You either do something to fix it or prepare to suffer. That's pretty much it. Um, we're not here to be, you know, we're just, we're just, don't shoot the messenger. We're just giving it to you straight. Go check out Aaron's channel, uh, Aaron Clary, assholeconsulting.com. And uh, he does consultations as well. Uh, Charlie has his Cultivate Crypto Mindset course coming out there, CryptoMindsetCourse.com. Get on the waiting list. We had over 100 people sign up for the waiting list in less than 24 hours. So it's going to be insane. Um, until then, guys, have a wonderful day. We'll be back tomorrow for free consultation Friday. Make money, make muscles, learn game, and uh, we'll see you next time. Peace out.